Chapter 10 of The Benefits of Being an Octopus. But the next day is Sunday and my mom doesn't have to work and neither does Lenny. Lenny goes out to help a neighbor who is having some car issues. Frank is watching the weather channel and Bryce and Aurora are given the green light to pile into the big bed with my mom and Hector for cozy time. Alone in the kitchen, I fix myself a frozen waffle and eat it looking out the window. All the trailers around us are gleaming in the sunlight. It's one of those crisp, clear days that make you think winter might not be all that bad. After I brush my teeth, I peek in at them in my mom's bedroom. Hector is in the crook of my mom's arm, playing with his toes, and Aurora is on her side, is on her other side, her face buried in my mom's t-shirt, like she can't breathe in enough of her smell. Bryce has to be the lump that's under the covers down by my mom's knees. My mom looks tired, but not as tired as usual. Like maybe Hector had one of his rare only wake up twice nights. She smiles at me. It's an attack of the snuggle bugs. Aurora burrows in deeper in response. I sit down on the side of the bed near Hector and give his belly a tickle. It's his giggle button, and it almost always works. He lets out a happy cackle. My mom nearly giggles, too. She's in a good mood today. I decide to go for it. Can I take the bus down to the wreck this morning, I ask. I promise to be back by two. No later than two. My mom's brows furrows, but only slightly. She looks over to where the sunlight is shining around the corner of Lenny's nice curtains. Then she nods. Just don't miss the bus back. All my errands are on the other side of town this afternoon. I won't be able to pick you up. I can't put my coat on fast enough. Soon, I'm out in the sunshine with bus money in my pocket, responsible for no one but myself for four whole hours. Fuchsia is sitting on the steps just inside the wreck, like I was hoping she might be. She smiles, her fingers twisting around one of her bright pink buns. You came. You ready for your little your little plastic foosball men to get destroyed? I wait for her to start grilling me about the crush thing. But after multiple days of me insisting there's no such thing, I think she's finally started to believe me. She tosses me a folded up white paper bag and I sit down on the stairs next to her. I reach into the bag to find a giant glazed donut. It's a day old, but it takes a lot for a donut to go bad. Crystal brought home some almond torts, too, but I know you don't like almond stuff. Thanks, I say as I dig in. Fuchsia's mom, Crystal, who Fuchsia unaffectionately calls by her first name, works the early shift at the bakery and currently has full custody of Fuchsia. But that happened only after Fuchsia got sent to foster care for a bunch of years. One rainy day back in second grade, her mom was so strung out on drugs that she couldn't unlock the door to let Fuchsia into their apartment after school. Our teacher was still at school when soaked Fuchsia, then McKenna, turned up, wearing, turned up wanting to use the phone and the teacher asked questions and Fuchsia was too tired to lie. Supposedly, Fuchsia's mom has kicked the habit at least she's convinced the judge who gave her custody again that she had, but it's hard to know for sure. At least being able to bring home free baked goods is a perk. When I finish eating the donut, I give Fuchsia's bright pink Sharpie covered sneakers a kick. So, do you want me to remind you of what happened last time we played? She stands up. You know your goals actually counted negative points. So my score was way bigger than yours. She runs up the stairs before I can say anything in response. Most of the kids who are at the rec on Sunday mornings play pickup basketball. So that means the game room is all ours. I call red, Fuchsia says. As I dropped my coat on the pool table, those white guys were worthless the last time I played you. When I tell them to block a shot, they're supposed to block that shot. 
It's not their fault. I stick a ball in and take a uh, practice shot on a goal with one of the white guys. Their little plastic heads can barely believe my amazing skills. Wait, you can't start yet. I have to do my good luck dance first. Fuchsia closes her eyes and plants her feet on the ground like she's channeling supersonic powers from the blue painted floorboards. She does finger wiggling jazz hands and then moves into high knee lifts like in PE with enough enthusiasm that I wonder if it's possible for her knee to smash into her nose. Spinning skills, get ready, she says. Gonna spin it, gonna win it. Oh no, I say, it's about being smooth. I slide my arm through the air like the tentacles they are and shimmy around the table. No matter how small that opening is, I'll be slipping that ball right through it. It's called being a foosball boss. We'll see who the real foosball who the real foosball boss is. She rubs her hands together and then grabs the handles. Spin to win. Fuchsia proceeds to spin her handles like a maniac for the next five minutes, missing the ball nearly every time it passes by. She doesn't stop even when I score on her. Spin to win, she shouts over the thumpity thump of the spinning plastic men as I collect the ball from her goal. How long do you think you can keep that up, I ask. For forever, I promised Jane Kitty I'd score at least once. I'd score at least once the next time I played against you, so there is no time for slacking. I load the ball back in. Well, I hope Jane Kitty is ready to be disappointed because before I can finish my sentence, the ball rolls directly into Fuchsia's spinning offensive line just as the red bodies whip around. And then with an ear-splitting smack, they whack the ball straight into my goal. Skills, shouts Fuchsia. She stops spinning her handles and switches into her victory dance, windmilling her arms as she leaps around the room. I try to keep a straight face, but I burst out laughing, especially because now she has grabbed a cue stick from the pool table and is wheel wielding it like she's the wielding it like she's the very proud drum major in a very proud parade. I'm so glad you'll have good news to share with Jane Kitty. Fuchsia whips her cue stick around until she's leaning, leaning on it like a cane. Yeah, we should probably stop here. I think that was my good luck for the week. So we do. We move the ping pong and score based on who has hit the most surfaces around the room with a single shot.